En hier bij Stanley Meijer, nu buiten zijn garage. En uh, we hebben net zijn uh, water-powered auto naar buiten gereden. Waar er nu wat over gediscussieerd wordt. En uh, er zijn dingen aan gewijzigd en zo. Dus ja, hij kan op het moment niet lopen, maar we mogen hem dus wel helemaal bekijken. Just explain how this thing okay, works. Yeah. Yeah, can you zoom in back in here? Are, are we on? Okay. Okay, yeah. okay now this is the uh, hydrogen the computer mic? system, which was designed uh, in order to be able to process the fuel to produce the hydrogen gas from water and do it economically and be able to control its firing, going to the en engine to allow the uh, uh, the Volkswagen engine to run uh, off of uh, hydrogen. There's a lot uh, uh, engineering design that went into this, even though that this is our uh, our systems engineering approach. Uh, the hydrogen computer system you see here will be miniaturized down to several uh, IC chips, which will allow us uh, to give the economics uh, to apply to a conventional car. Over here, uh, there's very unique design features uh, that had to be developed in order to uh, develop the water fuel cell as a, a retrofit energy system to conventional cars. Um, we had to go ahead and devel uh, develop the laser, what we call the laser distributor, as you see right here, which is put between the conventional uh, rotor cap and that of the rotor assembly. And primarily what this does, this sets up the electronic uh, signals that goes back and triggers the computer system in order to allow uh, the car to run successfully on hydrogen. Uh, in order to run this uh, engine off of uh, water, we've also had to learn the ability to adjust the burn rate of hydrogen to co-equal the fossil fuels. We did this by simply now uh, pulling off a portion of the exhaust gas that's coming from the engine, as you see through this tube here, that's going through this electronic regulator that's hooked up to the hydrogen computer. And basically what's happening is that as the ambient air is going into the engine and going through the burning process, it produces the non-combustible gases that retards the speed by which the oxygen atom unites the hydrogen and bring on gas ignition. So by simply using the, the non-combustible gases coming from the exhaust of the engine, we now modulate and control the speed by which that oxygen unites with the hydrogen, and therefore we are adjusting the burn rate of hydrogen to co-equal that of gasoline or, or, or fossil fuels or even diesel fuel. And that gave us the number one uh, retrofit capabilities of retrofitting the water fuel cell technology to an existing engine. And we do this electronically. The unit that you see right here, we call this a gas processor. And basically what we're doing is we're ionizing the ambient air gases that are now going into the process. And this allows us 
to trigger and use the hydrogen fracturing technology and tapping into a higher energy yield coming from the hydrogen. The units you see right here, this is referred to as a resonant cavity. Uh, water is now fed into the resonant cavity through this water tank, and as such, we now expose the water to a very high intense pulse voltage field and restrict the amps, and therefore the electrical polarization process now allows us to release the hydrogen economically from water, and by attenuating the uh, voltage field, uh, the amplitude of the voltage field, we now can control the rate of the production of the hydrogen gas on demand. So this is what's called, referred to as a constant demand generator. We also now extend or allow the voltage amplitude to increase even to a higher level and allow the, uh, the water uh, atoms to go into a, an ionization state, which gives us the ability even to produce a higher energy yield uh, by producing more hydrogen gas uh, on demand. So the fuel now coming from the water uh, through the electrical polarization process going into resonance, resonance meaning that we're actually tuning into the dielectric properties of water, and it allows us to reduce amps down, flow down to minimum and allow voltage to take over to disassociate the water molecule on demand. And those fuel gases are now coming through this uh, electronic injector system, as you see here. So basically, we're now feeding uh, the ionized air from the, uh, the gas processor. We're now also taking the, the water fuel gases that are now coming from ordinary water. We are now mixing it with the non-combustible gases, the AME air gases, and regulating those uh, control of the fluid mediums or four fluid mediums. And as a result, now we can uh, tune in and allow this engine to run off of natural water. This system's approach, uh, this particular unit here is referred to as the VIC or the voltage uh, intensified circuit uh, technology. Uh, this is being miniaturized down to a very small, lightweight uh, system. Uh, on a, this is demonstrated in our systems engineering approach on the technology that we can apply it to other uh, applications, uh, not only in the transportation area, but also in industrial applications. So it was paramount that we would uh, demonstrate and have the technology solved for design engineering retrofitting uh, to existing energy-consuming devices, whether it's, whether it's uh, being run in an internal combustion engine or a diesel engine or hook it to an industrial process. So all of these um, design interfacing uh, technology is now being solved. We are in the latter stages of what we call the pre-engineering system, uh, which will now allow us to miniaturize the technology uh, once we are completed on the design applications uh, and take it into mass production. Uh, I'll give you a classical example of this. We've also developed uh, from this technology what we call the water fuel cell injector. And basically, uh, this injector now is a miniaturized water fuel cell or miniaturized resonant cavity. And this technology now allows us to simply replace, we can bypass this part of the system's approach and now simply replace the spark plug with the water fuel cell injector. And as a result now, we can run the water up to the injector, which is now being processed and being exposed to a very, very high pulse voltage frequency and as a result, as the water fuel is being going into the system, then the, the explosion takes place inside the cylinder, therefore it makes this an extremely fail-safe, operable system. Uh, the core that you see here is strictly hooks up to a very high intensity voltage pulse, and we restrict the amps to cause the electrical polarization pro uh, process, which in turn the voltage amplitude now takes it and, and goes in the ionization state to perform the hydrogen fracturing technology, and then in turn, the high pulse voltage frequency now allows the ignition of the gases. So therefore, we do this electronically. And so this technology has taken us down to the water fuel cell tech, uh, water fuel injector, as you see here today, which gives us a very uh, economical way of simply converting and running a conventional car or on, on natural water. So basically, what we do is we feed ordinary natural water in here, non-processed natural water. We now feed the amine air gases being ionized. It's being mixed with the water. And then we mix the non-combustible gases going in the system that regulates the control and so allows us now to release the thermal explosive energy from hydrogen and do it on a control means. Further development on the 
on the technology, centered around also the development of what we call the laser accelerator control. And this would had to be developed in order to translate from a mechanical displacement to an electronic uh, displacement in order to allow the hydrogen computer system to produce the gas on demand based on acceleration control. So what you're really seeing with the water fuel cell as it is today is that we have a full system engineering approach allowing us now to use water as a main fuel source to be able to run a conventional engine and run it on water and do it and equal or supersede the performance uh, of a, a car running on gasoline and diesel fuel. Many people uh, do not realize that when you run a car or truck on uh, either gasoline or diesel fuel, you're actually running an, on hydrogen. And all we're doing is using the hydrogen from water. And under the National Bureau of Standards figures shows that when you use water, the energy release is roughly two and a half times more powerful than that of gasoline. So water is a very powerful fuel. And all you needed to do was solve the answers of, number one, producing the hydrogen economically, controlling it on demand, being able to adjust the burn rate of hydrogen and gas to co-equal the fossil fuels, and the third one was to be able to transport it without spark ignition. And we've solved all of these problems on the design engineering. And of course, the water fuel injector, as I've shown you, now gives us the abilities to uh, transport the water directly to the fuel injector, which is now going into the voltage zones, which now is performing the, the electrical polarization process that goes and triggers the hydrogen fracturing technology. But it's doing it inside the engine. So we all know that natural water um, is very stable, and therefore it, it becomes a very fail-safe, operable system, as we pointed out earlier. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. So in a system en engineering approach, uh, in mass production, it looks like we can translate and reduce the system's approach down mm -hmm. to a unit that costs roughly $1,500 per vehicle. Uh, for trucks, it will be slightly uh, larger than that, uh, r below $5,000. It looks like uh, we'll be able to reach the economics to it and use an ordinary natural water. You add n nothing to the water. You don't process the water in any way. Now, here's another uh, feature to the system that everybody asks me about. This is what happens uh, to the water in the wintertime. Does it freeze up? Well, part of our technology was in the areas of development what we call a steam resonator. Now, since the unlike atoms take on opposite electrical charges, we simply use another part of our technology to restrict the answer of voltage to take over, and therefore we agitate the water molecules, which in turn gener generates kinetic energy, which in turn heats the water. Now, this is phenomenal in the fact we consume very little electrical energy in order to heat the water. So uh, there are very far-ranging advantages and features to the technology, ranging even in the areas that we now have a way of using voltage and s s by switching off uh, AMPLO and dealing with um, the environmental control areas, we're developing uh, the technology in the areas of desalination of salt water. Whenever you uh, have a free and abundant energy source like water, uh, it's only limited to the imagination to put it to work. This technology is very applicable to desalination of the salt water, handling of toxic uh, waste uh, chemicals by high pulse voltage frequency and restrict the amps. We now can separate the molecular structure of toxic chemicals and render them uh, useless and safe. It also takes us to the technology uh, of combining unlike atoms that heretofore was not uh, possible under the natural state of covalent link-up. Uh, this led us to the development of the